Hi guys, today we're going to find out how to check your aerial antenna you might have your, in your home, how to check your signal, return loss, uh, how to actually measure and place your uh, aerial antenna to get the best performance and signal. We're going to look at as well to the cables to, to the impedance, uh, how, how they should match to the, your receiver itself to get the best um, uh, received signal itself. Uh, going to look at as well to the uh, if charts with to find out where this impedance layout on the chart of understanding. Also, I'm going to show you how to wire actually coaxial cable. Okay, guys, first things first, let's wire this coaxial cable. Let's take the first shield out. Got the mesh here. Why? Let's unfold this a little bit. We got. You can see that there's a dialectic cable. Well, let's leave that mesh on the end. Don't need it. Let's unfold the conductor. Here, we'll use that. Okay, squeeze straight away. See the plastic come out. I'm not exactly we want that. Take a little bit more. Bigger looks better. Okay, so it's something like this. Okay, so this might be too big. Let's go like this a little bit. So we we'll shorten. Actually, see that what we want, kind of. It's going to fit or not? Let's see. Okay, that looks perfect. Um, right, it's an excess of this mesh or wire. Let's take it out. To do the same on the end, on the end, I see you know, a bit. Right, we got those two fitted. Now we need to check actually continuity of this cable. You can do this with the multimeters. Um, there's a little diode with uh, sound here on the red. So this one is push it there. Okay, so. When what it does, it actually send the signal across conductor. So if there will be a sound, that means there is a continuity, which we do have. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, let's go to the next stage, which will be the checking the impedance of this cable. The two calculate the impedance of cable, you need to square the inductance by capacitance. Um, what we're going to do is going to connect the 
shield, okay? Let me find here. Okay, to calculate the inductance. You can do that with the analyzer as well, but any device like this can do. Okay, so you can see I set it up for 200 microhenries and we are in 9 microhenries. Okay, so that's our first measurement. Let me see that reverse. And the other options is obviously we connect to short here. This is our short on the table. So this is where the, in the highest the least impedance will be. How you measure the inductance on the cable? Okay, right. Let's do the the same measurement on capacitance. The next stop is to measure capacitance. You can see that is eighteen picofarads. So more or less setting of the cable which I have connected here. Okay, that we can calculate now the impedance. Let's check. The impedance is the square uh, inductance uh, divided by capacitance. So let's do square. Now we know that it was um, Nine microfarads. Okay, and now divided by eighteen picofarads. Okay. So uh, we can do this. That will give us some results, I guess. Seventy. Uh, we got close seventy ohm. So let's start. Uh, set up the frequency. We do 400 mega and we're going to stop on 900 megahertz. Okay, that's our ratio. You can see that here 400, 900. Right, at the moment we got a phase on the green, so 90 degrees is the best. Great. Let's do the uh, let's change our let's change our setting that will be uh, simulus display format okay so now we got our ratio Yeah. Let me show you. It's now in yellow sign. See that? It's 431. This is face. is 89. This is how you can move actually those markers here. Then you can see values change. see that so depends on frequency the 
um, square wave ratio is different. It's 93. Okay, when we're moving to, when I move to 90. Now it's 33 degrees of the face. And we got two point five ratio. So when we are at one is nine sixty, that's the five hundred. Can you see that? Depends what is your desired frequency you're looking for. Standing ratio will be different because the wake length is different for those frequencies. Um, okay, let's move a little bit antenna itself then and see how that reacts. You see, this is 35 now. Three. Such a big difference if I move here. I change a lot. That is without an amplifier. Let's try actually if we use the amplifier. So I show you actually um, the way how we can do with the amplifier itself. can see that the amplifier is connected straight to the device what we're going to do we're going to connect this cable to back to the amplifier okay and then connect the vector network analyzer to the output of the uh, amplifier um, of the power amplifier which I've got here this is the in cable so if we look at here we've got the switch on this is a 12 DC 100 milliamp max we've got this cable there which I'm going to use it okay to use it right now so let's take those clips here let's put this back here so we're going to amplify the signal and now we're going to connect our device here, which is that and there. Okay, so that's our thing. Let's see how it reacts. Look at this already difference one dot four five on that frequency. going up is still able to hang around more than before let's try to use it let's move it away the maximum duration is six seven and we had sometimes 30 so now the signal is able to reach further frequencies and then before this is my my cut so the closest we got is one 
we got in frequency 520 megahertz okay I hope I gave you an idea how that works what to look for and you enjoy and yeah please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and see you next time